In studio with us is Mark Fidget, Vancouver-based mortgage consultant and broker, has over 20 years of experience in the mortgage business. He's a member of Verico Mortgage Network and a driver behind, here's the website, www.advancedequity.ca. Oh, we're so happy to have you again, Mark. Thank you. I like this topic for this segment. It's all about how a second mortgage can help you sleep better at night. And I'm really interested in hearing <laughs> what you have to say about this. Yeah. And, and Mark, I invited you to come on because actually I got a text from you one day with a really short video and that was the headline on it was, you know, how a second mortgage can help you sleep better at night. And it got, got me enough to, to click through. And as I thought through it, I thought, you know, this is something that's relevant for some of my clients who might come in and they've got some equity, but they've also got a bunch of debt that they're paying a bunch of rates on. So I was really impressed with this, this strategies that you have there. So let's talk about that today. We've got a few minutes. Let's talk about strategies people can go through and how a second mortgage can help you sleep better at night. So just to, just to kick off, so if someone comes to you and they've got debt outside of their mortgage and they're wondering what their options are, how do you start to help them? Yeah, so great question, Blair. And, and we take them through a process of questions. And the, the first question obviously is, or the first thing they can do is keep doing what they're doing. And, and you've probably heard uh, the saying that if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll keep getting what you've been getting. Mm-hmm. And typically when someone's in a situation like that, they're maxed out on their credit cards. So one of the things they don't realize that even, and I'm saying even if they make their minimum monthly payment every single month on time, mm-hmm. no late payments, their credit is declining. And this has to do with credit utilization. And you know this just as well as I do, that if you're using a lot of your credit, and even if you're making your minimum payments, your credit score is in jeopardy of dropping. So if your credit limit is, you know, say $1,000 to pick a number, what's the right percentage to keep it at before your credit score starts to drop? So so this is a, you know, you have to realize this is a computer generated Mm -hmm. program that, you know, does this scoring system. But when when you talk about credit utilization, the thought is 30% mm. of your maximum credit, you should stay, you know, so if it's a thousand bucks, that's $300. Now, wow. most don't do that. I mean, yeah. obviously some people pay off their credit cards, but most think, you know, if I've got 500 bucks on there, it's not a big deal. And then there's the ones that are maxed out. And then not to mention the ones that are going over their credit or missing payments. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, credit utilization is a big factor there. So even making your payments, you could still be doing some damage to your credit ratings. That's one consideration. Correct. And then the other one is, uh, and I've, I'm sure you've probably seen these uh, debt reduction calculators where if you're making even that minimum payment, yeah. it's going to take you, you know, you're going to be in retirement and you're still carrying that debt with you because it takes forever. Scary, to actually pay scary numbers. At 20, sure. 20% interest rates are really scary. Even a few thousand dollars can last for 10 years, you know? For sure. Mm-hmm. And then, of course... If someone isn't making the minimum payments and you're now getting the collection calls, it's super stressful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's family's uh, jeopardy, uh, you know, works, has a negative effect on the relationship. So obviously we go through that and and that's something that you can keep doing. Mm -hmm. So don't do anything, just keep doing what you're doing. And I see this example again and again, Mark, usually with young families. Sometimes there's a couple of kids and they're, you know, they've really struggled to get into the housing market and, you know, saved and scrimped for what they could. And now they've just had a tough time with costs and a lot has went on to credit. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of people in this situation. So option one is just do nothing, continue doing what you're doing, you'll get the same result. Other options. Option number two, obviously, is sell your property. Now, you know, we, we take someone through the, you know, the trials and tribulations of that. I mean, most people don't want to move because it's emotional, right? it's yeah. emotional and a lot of them have families and then they're, what do you, you know, where can you move to? What's the rent going to be like? So typically they don't want to do that, but we take them through, listen, you're going to eliminate all your debt. There's going to be a cash out, um, you know, it may work for you, but typically most people don't want to move. It's just yeah. too, too stressful, too much of an upheaval. Kids got to, you know, it's just too much. Yeah, I hear people saying, where are we going to rent for what we're paying in mortgage? And then also this gets us out of the market. What if the house keeps going up? We'll feel so, you know, silly having sold too early. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, it, for some, it may be the best because I, 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 we yeah. don't want to bandage you into a situation where it's just going to fall apart. So That's right. it's definitely something and a conversation we go through. Mm-hmm. And, and, and lastly is the second mortgage. And when I say lastly, we want to bring that last because we want to give it, make sure everybody has the right uh, information in front of them. But this is usually one of the best. So we're giving them a second mortgage on their property. It's in a mortgage that doesn't report on the credit bureau. So ju- just so we're clear, it's going to erase all your debt that's on the credit bureau now, which is causing a negative effect. Mm-hmm. It's going to be replaced with a second mortgage, like I said, that's not reporting on the bureau. 
it's so so a couple of things are going to happen. First thing is your debts all erased, your credit's going to start to heal and go up. Secondly, your cash flow is going to increase because the payment on your second mortgage is lower than your combined payments on all these high interest rate credit cards. And of course, then you're going to sleep better at night. And that's kind of a lane where <laughs> we go back to how does this make you sleep better at night? Exactly. Well, yeah, definitely having more money in your pocket and more more security would, would help. And now, Mark, for some of our listeners who maybe haven't had a mortgage before or a second mortgage, let's just define the term. So what is a second mortgage? So it, it's it, when we say second, it's just second position. So mm-hmm. when you get a first mortgage, most have gone through, gone down to their lawyer. It's registered on title. It's in first position. That means it's, it's the first charge on title. Mm-hmm. This is exactly like the first mortgage, but it's the second charge on title. So it's behind your first mortgage holder. Okay, so I went to mortgage broker and I got a great deal on my first mortgage and then the second mortgage is basically just another debt against the house, but it came on second in timeline, so it's called a second mortgage, a Correct. second priority. Correct. And, and, okay. and one of the advantages when we talked about increased cash flow is it's, it's amortized or it's interest only, so the payments are much lower than your, than your credit card debts. Hmm. And that might be kind of leading into my next question here, Mark, was, you know, basically what we're doing here in simple terms, we're swapping debt for debt, right? You're taking debt that you got in your credit cards, and you're now putting it against your house. How is that beneficial? How is that wise? Well, we talked about it increasing, is allowing your credit bureau to heal, mm-hmm. heal your so credit score. Factor. And, and, and a, on renewal time, that might be important. Well, right? and this is the key. We're trying, mm-hmm. to, we're trying to get an exit strategy. We don't want you to stay in that second mortgage forever. So your credit's going to heal, your cash flow is going to increase, and uh, hopefully within a year, we, we provide you with a credit healing strategy that if you listen to what we do and you follow the, you know, the instructions, then we're hoping we can refinance you and make that first mortgage a little bit bigger, take out the second mortgage, and you're in a much better position a year from now. Okay. So in, in the case, because I'm assuming a second mortgage is going to be more expensive than your first mortgage, so they've got a higher risk, right? They're the second in line. Uh, but your point, Mark, is you're not going to pay this higher rate forever. You're going to pay it for a period of time until you can repair the credit. And then when you go to renew your mortgage, for example, you'll get a higher first mortgage at a lower rate. Is that making sense? Correct. Okay. And the second mortgage payment is still going to be less than what your credit card debt, for example, if that's what your big debt was, uh, than that rate. Right. And, and this which second, is significant. Exactly. And this second mortgage, you know, it could be credit card debt, it could be car pay, it could be rolling all your debt into one to free up your Got your, it. your credit and hmm. let your score heal. Even income taxes, things like that, the lenders Anything. don't care too Anything. much. Now, I guess income tax isn't hurting your credit, but so the stuff on your credit is what you'd want to prioritize. But to your point, it could be any any dollars that are outstanding against you. Right. And, you know, CRA could be pushing for the sale of your house, so you might want to pay that off. Right? That's so, true, yeah. yeah. So is there a path? Can you talk about the path that you take then at that point? Uh, What the first thing you said you do is provide the second mortgage. And then what are the things that happen after that? Obviously, your debt's been erased. We've paid off your credit card. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, how you deal with debt is very important. If you're just going to go back there and charge all your credit cards Mm -hmm. back up or go out and get another car lease, then you know what? It's all for naught and you're just whittling away your equity in your home and it's never going to get any better and you're going to end up selling your house anyway. So you might as well go with option number two in the beginning if that's kind of where you're going to be. So it's Mm -hmm. really important that heal your credit, try to save some money. Uh, you know, your employment's important, so you got to make sure you, you know, that you're not coming to me a year from now and saying, listen, I quit my job or something like that. So it's, you know, it's kind of... Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. yeah I could... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, these, these are big, big questions, big decisions. This is a big strategy, Mark, that I know some young families I've been sitting across the table from lately, that this is perhaps something they should investigate. Um, you know, I wonder, Mark, is in our last minute here, can you talk about the whole idea of, of what you do as, as a mortgage broker? Because I know we've had you on the show before, and we've talked about mortgage broker and what they can do for you, but this is a really important type of a decision for a person. So how do you help them go through something like this? Well, absolutely, Blair. And whether it's a second mortgage or refinancing or buying your home, Anything to do with this type of mortgage transaction is typically the biggest investment decision a person will ever make. So imagine knowing you have a skilled, experienced, licensed professional on your side every step of the way to help you through the maze of lender options, mortgage documentation, rules and regulations, who will ask you critical questions, listen vigilantly, vigilantly, and craft a strategic plan. And typically, it doesn't cost you a penny. Obviously, when we're talking about second mortgage uh, and things like that, there's mm-hmm. a, a fee involved. But mm-hmm. traditionally, with refinances and purchases, it doesn't. Mark Fidget is a Vancouver-based mortgage consultant and broker, www.advancedequity.ca. You're listening to Dollars and Cents.